on your question, you'll be, you may be asked to complete a table. Okay? Now the table of values will give you an angle theta, okay? and it will give you the range if theta is between 0 and 90, 90 and 180, and so on. Okay? Then here, one, one half of theta, so this is just cutting that angle in half, and it applies to our half angle formula. And what we're doing here is practicing um, what would be the sign here, would it be positive or negative for your value. And you, again, you do that depending on which quadrant you are in. All right. So let's take a look. Um, so if theta is between 0 and 90, half of that would be half the range between 0 and 45. Now, the values we have here are cosine and the sine of 1 half theta. Okay, so for the cosine, you want to look at the range here because it's for full theta. When you're doing sine and deciding whether it's positive or negative, you want to look at this range because it's the sine of half of the angle. Okay, so cosine theta. In the first quadrant between 0 and 90, we know cosine is positive. What about the second quadrant? So let's see where we're at. Between 90 and 180, we're in this quadrant here, and we know that cosine is negative here. Sine, when we're in that quadrant, is positive. Um, in this next quadrant, cosine and sine are both negative. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive, and sine is negative. And in the first quadrant, they're both positive. That's something we started our course with, is which signs they were. And that's because cosine is an x value, um, sine is a y value, so anywhere x is positive, cosine is positive. Anywhere it's negative, cosine is negative, and sine applies to the y's. So let's try this. Okay, so our first blank that we need to fill in is right here. So the cosine of theta, so we can look at theta, is between 90 and 180. Well, 90 to 180 is the third quadrant, and cosine is negative there. So this would be negative. B. We want the cosine theta in this range. Okay, well, theta is between 180 and 270, so it's the third quadrant here, which cosine is still negative there. Okay, next, C, we want for theta, its cosine, would it be positive or negative between 270 and 360? Well, 270 to 360 is our fourth quadrant, and cosine is positive there. The next value we need is D here, and it's notice the sine of one half of theta. So one half theta, right when we're here, is between 180 and 225, and we want the sine of that angle. Is going to be positive or negative? Well, 180 to 225 would be in this quadrant, the third quadrant, and sine is negative in that quadrant, so this would be negative. E, right here. Again, we're still doing sine of 1 half theta, so we're using 1 half theta to see what range we're in. We're between 225 and 270. Okay, 225 and 270 is still in this quadrant. It's the second part of the quadrant. So sine there is still negative. So E would also be negative. F, we jump back over to our cosine theta. So let's look what theta, range theta is in. Between 640 and 630. Okay, well, where would that be? That means we've gone once around the circle to 360, um, and then we've gone 180 more. So we are in quadrant 3 on this part. Okay, so is cosine positive or negative in that quadrant. Again, that means we've gone all the way around and ended up back in the third quadrant. Okay, we know cosine is negative in that quadrant. So my answer for F, if I can get down there, is negative. G, the sine of one half of theta. So one half theta we cut those angles in half, we're in the range of 270 to 315. So 270 to 315 is in the fourth quadrant. Sine is still negative there. So this would be negative. Um, H, we are in the range of 630 to 720. 
630 degrees would be if we went all the way around the circle and then we went another 270 degrees. So we're in this quadrant here, the fourth quadrant, and cosine is positive in that quadrant. Okay, and then over here, sine 1 half theta. 1 half of theta would be between 315 and 360, which is also the fourth quadrant, but we're talking about sine, and sine is negative in that quadrant. Okay, so I was able to fill in the chart um, based on what I know about the unit circle, okay, and where sine and cosine values are positive and negative. And what we would use that for is that would help us to decide um, whether or not we would use the plus or the minus sign when we're using this formula.